Hello, everyone. Sound is good. It's nice to be in front of such a group of valuable people. Here are our last line of defense. We come from, uh, from a data background, so I'm going to take a data asset management view on things. And uh, GDPR these days is uh, referred to primarily with its abbreviation. And um, being a data guy, I've worked with business data for about 25 years. I was uh, under the impression that GDPR might be a profile race for data management governance. Working with data understanding it, really take care of it. And uh, from where I'm standing, there's been surprising little talk about data. There's lots of legal go things going on, papers we have written. You can go on any website without being asked for cookie consent. But remember this, or at least I thought in the beginning it was going to be about protecting data. The question is, how do you protect what you don't know? Where is the data that we need to keep secure and manage? Your org organizations uh, manage masses of data. Much of it is actually relating to a person. I'm going to take this shirt, for example. It comes from a web store. Um, they mail me a link or send me some mail, actually. Physical mail. I go on, go into their store, go into my session, log on. I have some credentials. They know how long my sleeves need to be, for instance. Um, I make my trade. The systems probably do a lot in the background. I don't know what. They need to, and you need to. There's a claim system, probably. Um, the payment goes through a, a payment processing service. Um, then it becomes logistics. The shirt needs to be picked from a warehouse, connected to my order, sent to the right guy, me. And then, in due course, there's a brown van or a, or a yellow van on my door, and uh, I get it. And remember, this is real simple, nothing fancy. There's 15, 20 systems involved. And the accrual of data, the build-up of data, is actually surprising when you start thinking about it. What goes on? And remember, this is just me buying one shirt. There's technical information, there's information about myself, there's persisted information from the master data management, there's things relating to the, to the transaction, there's things that they have learned from our relationship, picked out. I want them, obviously, to, to use it in my uh, benefit. There's some quite serious things going on. If we're in Finland, the payment processing, or at least the credit check, will consume my social security number. I don't want that to be misused. Uh, there's a mass of indirect information. Remember, GDPR not only designates my name as personal information, but the user ID as well. So the technical keys are all under this umbrella. Now, when you were preparing for GDPR, you had a legal guy who was sitting down with a business guy and they tried to understand what goes on. And this is the picture that they got in the best case. Probably they will have missed out at least half of the systems. But what happens now? This is your view. Where did the data go? Where is it? How old is it? Is it up to date? Is it correct? Can we process it? Have we agreed? What is the premise across geographies? across testing systems, across legal entities. There's a number of layers building up between your business and the data. So we've done uh, this type of work for, for a couple of years now. And uh, no matter what industry you're in, we can tell you that it's more relevant how the systems were built. We're in a generation now with about 20 years, uh, the, the design practices are about 20 years old, and uh, you have system generations which are running on 10 years. There's a massive build-up 
it's hard to delete data. Some data is actually impossible to delete. So there's a lot. Try to create some uh, examples of things that you are not aware of, business was not aware of, and the guys preparing a legal posture, the legal definition never were told. And what we also have learned is that you're in, trapped in some silos in your organization. There may be people who know better, but it's really hard to get the message across. So if we can give the data in a format that your business will understand and relate to, then it will be much easier for you to establish the dialogue between the key players. I'm not going to plug what we do more, but I need to make you aware that this is possible. We can traverse your whole architecture. It will take some time, but we can actually pick out what is personal data, be it direct or indirect, across databases, files, emails, your cloud as well. But remember, if you don't do this properly, you, have only or you only have two sorts of data. You have legal data and you have illegal data. We can help you find both. So, coming back to my first, the, the fancy uh, beginning with the, the, ended up with the data protection. So, protecting data. From where we stand, you're pretty much just getting started with protecting the data, finding out what you need to do. And much, as la much of last year and coming up to May was spent doing uh, things that your legal advisors will tell you. You were reading up on what is it all about. There's hundreds of sources for method advice, you go to uh, wherever you want to go. All you're going to find is just a really, really big picture of things that all seem to be pretty relevant. Where's the start? So this is something that we would advise you to consider. Take data seriously. There are organizational measures and there are technical measures. That's really what you do to take care of the data, but first you need to understand where it is and how it behaves. Keep in mind that you will be unaware of most of your indirect data. Nobody really thought about that. What are the identities? There are people who will help you with identity management. What they will not be able to help you with is establishing who is who. Because your identity is now spread across all of the different systems. You have a multi-local identity management baseline. You need to start there and understand from an architectural point of view and from a development point of view how you get going. We think, and these are things we're learning now, we've begun a dialogue with, with security people. We come from a data background, remember that. Um, you can create a data asset management view on the high level aggregates of, of our reports. So you understand how many people do you have on the different systems? This IP address, we have 150,000 identities. We can assume that 10% of those are miners, and, and you need to understand the complexities involved. If you breach one repository, what identities have you then got hold of? Where can you reuse them across the different systems? There's a massive buildup of old data. All industries, all systems. And what you can do in the beginning is to effectively reduce your compliance gap. And there are many ways to go about this, but do become aware of that. And uh, had a talk with someone who said, OK, we've, we've been doing this uh, accrual of information for 106 years. I think there's a lot to clean out. And then the mundane task of resp responding to the data subjects. They now hold a lot of rights. And please be mindful of the relationship and how you come across in these situations. Maintain constructive and a good dialogue and try to convey that they are really exercising their full right. This is a quote I'm very thankful for. Um, I didn't think of this way of putting it, but. When you have a breach, that's the boom. And now we're in the time 
leading up to that. What can we do? How can we prepare? How can we create a baseline for us to operate with any sort of planning and rationale when the 72-hour clock is ticking away? Data asset management is a life cycle discipline. Data is created, it's maintained. We process it if we're using the GDPR jargon. And then it needs to be obsoleted, taken out. And I mean taken out, not only marked for deletion. It needs to be removed from the data set. We need to govern and remember, I don't subscribe to the point of view that data is oil. It's not. Data is an asset but it must be put into productive use. Master data only when it becomes a transaction creates business value. So follow the transactions, understand what happens, and then analyze your architecture. And then if you put the existing structures and strategies and planning methods that you are already use and know, the threat vectors, the port scans, the architecture, where you are vulnerable, how much access you so, uh, assign to the different inventories or, or assets. If you put them on one line and then the data assets on the other, then you suddenly can create a dialogue with your business side. Because this is, from what I hear from you, one of the, the, uh, the problems. Your business stakeholders are struggling understanding why they need to commit to these investments. Now we can help them understand this is your data. I need to be able to protect it. So, in the age of digitalization, we have a structure of, of requirements. The first being that the processing fulfills the requirements of legality. We need to convey a sense of security. And remember, the consumer, they have an abundance of choice. They need to want to come back to your service. They need to feel that they're being taken care of and then you're working with integrity. They, need, they also need to be able to fulfill the reason for getting there. I need to get my shirt, I need it to the right size, in the right color, etc. So the traditional usability, the use case, ergonomics are obviously there, but they need to be built under. So what do we use for this? Legality is defined in GDPR, but it's not a competitive edge, it's just the definition of being legal. The technical and logical security also only creates a basis for being successful. It's not actually being successful in itself. Then we have the, the things we can see, the UX, the use cases, integration into uh, different channels, my own behavior, my cultural and, uh, and uh, language. And then, when all of this is said and done, then we can actually create value, share value. And um, we think it's really useful to understand that everything needs to be built into one package. You can be friendly and service-oriented here, and then there's a different face over here saying, and I'm the guy who is legal. Combine it. It needs to be a seamless experience. But what happens? If you miss out, if you don't take these things seriously, there will be nothing left. There's no business value in this picture anymore. Nobody will return. So you lose both the effort you made for GDPR and you lose all of the investment you made into your digital journey. And um, as I said, I come from data background, and you come from protection. So I think together we should be able to make it work. Thank you very much for your attention.